Culture swap. Swap my culture. We watched Feast. It wasn't good. Oh, the end. Good app, Liam. Good app. I told you we'd get it down in under an hour. <laughs> Honestly, oh, this film. There's going to be spoilers. We're going to ruin this film. There's nothing to ruin. I have to admit, I did suggest this film because when I did first, like, I watched it uh, probably 10 years ago. And I remember thinking it was all right. To the point where like, I, I, I've watched the entire trilogy and I remember kind of thinking that it was all right. I mean, it's weird. I remember, you, it's not, I don't think I'd blame you for this film. Not like some of the other stuff where you've been like, this is a good film, we should do it. Because we were sort of looking for a short one. Yeah. Because we knew the episode was being recorded soon. I mean, we, wanted, like, this we didn't want like a, a um, we didn't want a sci-fi, we didn't want a coming of age. Marvel yeah, we wanted core. like a middle ground film that both of us could feasibly enjoy. Yeah, that's not this film though, is it? No, it isn't. But at least we both didn't like it. Yeah, that's true. But, I, yeah, it's just bad. Yeah. It's just a bad film. A bad film that got made. And So what happens in the film? So the the plot, in air quotes, of this film is a group of people are all in this sort of... What do you call it? Like a pub that's, you know, in the middle of fucking nowhere. It's like nowhere. a dive bar. Yeah. It's like a dive bar in the middle of shit all nowhere where a bunch of people who are all dregs of society mixed with, you know, a few randomers are all hanging out and drinking and then monsters attack and they have to survive. Yeah, basically. That's like that's that's the idea that someone sat down at a table and said, this is the film I'm making. And then they went, all right, let's make it a kind of, let's try and make it funny and try and make it a bit gory and yep. let's get Jason Mewes in it. Yep. Why not? Jason Mewes, for those that are unaware, he, he is like the J of J and Silent Bob. It's just... He's in it for about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, he is. Then he gets his face ripped off. Which is, so th- this is one of the issues this film has, is it, what it's trying to, it's trying to be clever. Do you in think? The, yeah, there is an attempt at sort of, it, part of the like, the comedy part of it is that they've got this thing that runs throughout the film where when a new character enters you get like yeah. a splash screen of that character their name is something like you know there's heroine hero uh i can't remember all the other ones but there's a bunch of grandma edgy cat harley mum vet yeah boss that... man coach honey pie yeah hot wheels is a guy in a wheelchair yeah yeah that's right yep um and so all these characters pop up, they get a little thing that's like, what do they do? Which is a little joke. And then it's like life expectancy, as in, you know, we've seen a horror film. How long would this person survive? Yeah. And one of the, the bits, so that's the, the bit where they're trying to then be clever is like the hero turns up and it's like life expectancy, the whole film, obviously. Yeah. And then he dies and it's like, whoa, <laughs> how crazy are we killing off the hero? Yeah. Like, and when it was, when the film first started and it started doing that, I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm, I'm on board with this, like. It's obvious, they're going to use this for laughs. Like one of the characters they say is going to die is going to be the one that lasts the longest. Obviously, yeah. They've got like like there's a kid and they're like we wouldn't kill a kid, would we? Yeah. Um, and like with Hot Wheels, there's something like uh, they they say something along the lines of him being in a wheelchair. Like we wouldn't dare yeah. attack him, would we? And you know. yeah, it's yeah. So it's them trying to play on the whole like all these stereotypes in films. But instead of doing that well and actually being like it's silly, like when because. So after Hero dies, very quickly... Yeah. They introduce heroin. Yeah. And they're like, the second one, maybe this will be lucky. And, like, the way that you actually play on the the hero always dies is you kill off the first guy. That makes sense. You do that. And then the heroine turns up, who's your strong female lead, and you make her win. Because that's then you playing on that. Yeah. But just killing them again, and killing everyone, and leaving, like, two people alive. You're not playing on the stereotype there. You're just killing everyone. Yeah. It's just dumb. Yeah, it honestly is. I I lost interest. That that scene also, it happens throughout the film, like every now and again someone will pop up and they'll give them one. Yeah. But the first, I, I, I know that I timed it and it was 14 minutes, I believe, yeah. which is literally just them going, bam, the hero. Duh, yeah. Duh, 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 duh. yeah. Bam, Hot Wheels. Duh, 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 duh. Bam. And I was like, after about five minutes, I was like, this is ridiculous. This needs to stop. Yeah. And it doesn't. No. And then I think the other thing is... Um... Like they they, so they do they do kill a kid quite quickly, which I have to admit, even though I've seen it before, I'd forgotten that had happened. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. But when they have these monsters attacking, every single time without fail, the camera just goes into this like epileptic fit. Yes, it just freaks out. Yeah, and it's just it then just becomes painful to watch because you can't like it's it's already dimly lit. Yeah. 
probably to hide like low budget. Uh, and then they're doing these like quick cuts and the shaky camera stuff, and it's just it's it's annoying to watch. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I think like none of the characters are particularly likable. Nope. I there there was. I'm trying to think if there was like a character that I was like. I think the mum of that kid. Yeah, she was all right. She's the only character I had sympathy for, where I was like, she's clearly like being forced into prostitution, basically, by her situation. Yeah. yeah. Which then you're like, oh, that's sympathetic. But she's like the only one. Yeah. Maybe the first heroine as well. Yeah, she was all right. Uh, the, one of the things I didn't like, they had this whole like storyline with um, Beer Guy, where he kind of like starts, one, one of the monsters sicks all over him. And then he starts like finding maggots and stuff, and he, he essentially just starts rotting. Yeah, and it just—I was just a bit like, "Where's this going?" Yeah, because I thought it was him. I thought it was going to be him turning into one of the monsters. Yeah. Also, yeah, go on. Seeing where the monsters just have sex. Yeah, right. So this is one of my real issues with this film, like big issues. Yeah. Is one, it's it's going for the cheap laugh, which is fine. That works in some films. The like, ha, huh, look, sex, ha <laughs> ha, farts, poop, vomit, all funny. But this film doesn't do it in the way that makes that good, which is like, you know, actually being, I don't know, clever about it, maybe. Not even clever. Like, Dumb and Dumb is not a clever film, but it yeah. works. Yeah. This is just, like, kind of offensive about it. Like, yeah. I don't I don't need to see a scene where, like, th- there is a scene where they, um, I can't remember her name, the tough chick. Is it Tuffy? Uh, I, I, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Probably. Maybe. There's a girl who gets her leg cut off at the start of the film. Yeah. Later on in the film, they, they decide they're going to use her dead body as bait to draw the monsters in and then blow it up. Yeah. Uh, it turns out she's still alive, and the sort of one of the more bad characters is like, no, she was never alive, we didn't see this, we're going to do it anyway. Which yeah. they do. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so you're making a point here, like, he's the baddie, that's fine. But then they have a scene where one of the monsters just rapes her in the mouth, and I was like, that's unnecessary. Yeah. Like, that's not funny, it's not you making a point, it's just crass. And honest, yeah. like honestly, to the point where I was like, I'm just revolt. Like I'm not even revolted in like a gore or horror way. I was just like, this is just in poor taste. It's not funny. Yeah, like like there's another scene, like nowhere near on that level, but it's just it just feels unnecessary. Where like um that they shut a door on a monster and he gets his dick stuck in it and someone yells out like monster cock. Yeah, it's yeah. it's just it's immature. It's immature and not in a not in a smart funny way. It's just immature. Yeah, like a little kid got hold of his a pen and started writing on his dad's script and then his dad got drunk filmed the film and went wait a minute i don't remember all these weird sex scenes i put in yeah oh yeah no this film left a bad taste in my mouth after i finished watching i'm not surprised yeah i've got the other two to watch are you actually gonna watch them i kind of have to to get my list down oh god i mean they're short at least i do remember something that happens in i think the second one that at least the first time i saw it really made me laugh and i wonder if it still will I hope it doesn't. I hope that it turns out you watched all these films drunk. Yeah, that's entirely possible. Entirely possible. You just go back and watch them and you're like, what was I doing? And I remember how the third one ends. And I remember being like, well, it's a bold way of ending this trilogy. But... We'll see. Honestly, I'll cover those in housekeeping in future. But as for now, we feast. I just like... I started watching it with Kat and she emailed actually. Um, Oh, yeah. She sent us an email saying, thoughts on feast. Big pile of poo, full of crap jokes, rubbish stereotypes, and Jay Muse deserves better. Hashtag justice for Jay. Yep, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, to the point where so, like, you see the monsters having sex, and, like, immediately one of them basically just, like, craps out a baby monster. Yeah. Like, I don't know if we're doing justice to how terrible this film is. Yeah, I really want people to understand how bad this is. Yeah, like... Like, it's just, it's just so, so blindingly poor. Hmm. And... Which, I'm I trying to think, is there any part of it that I didn't mind? And I, I do think a couple of the characters are okay. Yeah. Um, it nearly tackles some interesting ideas. Nearly. Like 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 you were saying, that whole like the woman who they think is dead and they use her essentially as bait. And, it, yeah. and then it turns out that she's not dead. That like moral quandary that they're put in could have been interesting if they'd have actually done something with it. Yeah, and instead the two char- one of the characters is like, no, we'll just kill her anyway. And the other character, instead of being like the one who's like, no, we shouldn't do this, does it, and yeah. then regrets it. Yeah. It's like, oh, we shouldn't have done it. And you're like, okay, cool, what? Exactly. Um... And then the, the whole getaway, like, it's just all poorly written. The getaway makes no sense. They're like, the only way we can escape is through this hatch in the basement yeah. that will let us get out because the monsters don't know it's there. Yeah. 
Sorry, where does it lead? That what? Yeah. Why would the monsters not fucking know it's there? Oh yeah, just silliness, just non-stop silliness. Um, and not good silliness, just bad silliness. It has Henry Rollins in, which like just surprised me. What would I know him from? Um, he is. Hang on, he's famous for something, but I can't remember what it is. He, he, like I know I've seen, I've seen him in like an episode, um maybe one of the films but he's he's been in Jackass before and the reason they got him in Jackass is because he's like well known oh okay I think he was in a band maybe Black Flag I don't know them um yeah they're a, a punk band Black Flag you probably would know like of them oh okay uh yeah that's right so that's what he's known for okay but yeah yeah he was in Jackass and he's he's been in loads of stuff basically. And also yeah. feast, which yeah. yeah, I mean, how did they get two these two big name people in it? Like, I mean, the thing is, it's like two thousand and five, so Jay or like Jason Mewes, not exactly a huge name. No, that's fair, I guess. Um, and it really is just a cameo. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I just think like none of not not none, but very few of the characters come across as remotely likable. Yeah, or even interesting. It's just yeah, I don't know. yeah. Like like you said, like the mum who loses her kid is interesting. Yeah. Um, I quite like the the brotherly relationship with the guy in the wheelchair and his sort of, sort of douchey older brother. Yeah. Um, I hated the boss man guy. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't mind the the barkeeper dude. Yeah, but he didn't do anything really. No, he didn't do a lot. Um, grandma. That's the thing. I feel like I feel like it like it sort of skews like the ones you do like because most of them are just such like utterly boring pieces of crap. Yeah. That anyone who doesn't offend you or, you know, do something shit, you're just like, well, they're all right. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, the grandma didn't particularly do anything, did she? I sort of vaguely remember she was fine. Did she you, existed. Did you see past the credits? Yeah, the end scene where she gets is attacked still by a monster. There. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, because they, they do sort of. She disappears halfway through the film. And I. This movie's so bad that they literally just have a character disappear. And I didn't even notice until no. they reappeared after the credits. Yeah, at the end I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I liked I just... um, Honey Pie. Yeah, the, she, there was like one scene that was, or not one scene that was well acted in this film, but her scene where she looked in the guy's eye and it was full of maggots. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was decent acting. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, we, I, I don't know if it's coming across here, but we are really struggling to talk about about anything remotely interesting with this film because this yeah, film was not remotely Trying to find good points in this film is impossible. It is just a bad film. No one should go and watch it. Don't yeah. even give it the time of day. The monsters looked all right. That's not a reason to watch the film, though. No, it's not. But I'm just saying, like, you know, costume. Yeah, the well big monsters there. looked right. The little monster was a bit shit, shit I yeah. thought. But the big ones were kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just wish this film hadn't relied so much on just being sexual humour. And... Yeah lame humour just uh, like just lean uh, into the gore if you're going to do this film just lean into the gore don't try and be a comedy horror I think if you're maybe like 13, 14 years old and you're having a sleepover and you want to like I don't know you're, you're, you're that, that age where it's cool to be desensitised to stuff sure give this a go um, you'll be the coolest guy in the room no doubt but like otherwise if you have like two brain cells to rub together yeah don't watch this film Yes, maybe this isn't. Maybe maybe we're missing something. Yeah, if there is a deeper subplot to this film that me and Liam have completely missed, someone let us know. Yeah, because you know maybe this was created as like a response to the Iraq War because you know you have the vet <laughs> character in it and uh, I don't know. I'm reaching. Yep. I'm really reaching. Yep. I liked the one scene right at the end where the car didn't start in the credits. Really? I just thought that was dumb. I mean, at that point, I was like, it's an attempt at humour that's slightly better than the rest of it. I think. Uh, we should watch number two together. Yeah? Yeah, I think we should. Should we watch it when I come down to do the New Forest bike trail? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, fine. Uh, I, I'm expecting it to not be good, but I do remember there being one bit that did make me laugh. It's going to be something really offensive that I'm just like, Liam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. If I remember rightly. Um... Jeez, this is, a, this is a short culture swap because it's just bad and it's not talkable bad. It's just shit. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm really trying to think. Like, how do we discuss this in a way that at least the discussion is interesting? This movie is so devoid of interest that I don't even think we can. No, honestly, listeners, I think us trying to drag this out any longer is gonna just bore you because it will just be me and Liam going. But it's bad though. It's just yeah. bad. It's so bad. 
what I have found interesting Go on. is I've looked on Letterboxd at what people are saying about it. And yeah. it's generally getting like three stars, three and a half, a few four stars, a couple of fives. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you this is an interesting one. Do you would would this have been during the time when you were doing letterbox reviews? I still do letterbox reviews. No, I know, but but back then were you doing them? Oh no, I wasn't back then, no. That's what I mean. I was gonna say it would be interesting if we could see what drunk Liam thought of this film. And let's hang on. Oh, I do. Yeah, and I've, <gasps> I've got shit. I've, I wrote a lot about it. Did you actually? Yeah. Oh man, I don't know if I want to read this though. Oh, can you send me the link? I, I, it's not a link. I've just got. It. So what, what happened is I, I used to use this website called Flickster that was like uh, attached to Facebook. Oh, okay. And it got really buggy, so I basically exported all of my reviews into a like a .dot text file or something. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I can read it out, but it. This could be embarrassing. I'm. T- I think you should try. If it's if it ends up just being a shit review, then we can just cut it out. But I do. I am fascinated to hear. All right. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. First of all, just tell me what what star rating this got. Or do do you have a star rating? I on don't it have a star this? rating on it for it. No. Damn. No. Okay. All right. The opening to this 2005 horror comedy quickly and effectively establishes our key players in a unique and original style. Very quickly. Just I'm going to hit pause. Quickly and effectively. Yeah. It was a 12 minute intro. <laughs> 14, I think you said earlier. Sorry, 14. Sorry, yeah. 14. Um, whenever we are first introduced to a new character, the camera pauses and a brief bio pops onto the screen, giving a name, fun fact, and life expectancy. Yep. This eliminates the need for awkward exposition, for this scraggly group of misfits are your typical bar dwellers. It are also. They? <laughs> Sorry. What? They're your typical bar dwellers. Apparently, that's what, what bars are you going to? What bars were you going to in 2005? Mm, not good ones. Well, this is no. in 2008-ish when I think I saw this. 2008, okay, 2009. Okay. But yeah. It also promises a horrifying death for one unlucky character in the next 70 minutes. Uh, there's a brief but humorous cameo from Jason Mewes too, playing himself. It's your usual bar setting, with the regular clientele drowning their sorrows and spoiling for a fight until the arrival of Hero bearing a decapitated monster head with the revelation that there are more monsters and they're on their way. This yep. mismatched group are going to have to put their differences aside and learn to work together if they hope to make it through the night in one piece. Feast is a fun gore-filled horror romp <laughs> which keeps its tongue firmly in its cheek. It pays an obvious homage to under siege horror films recalling memories of Night of the Living Dead and, more recently, the pub climax from Shaun of the Dead. Jeez, whoa, dude, what a fucking bold step you took back then. <laughs> you compared this film to Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. And then Shaun of the Dead. You have yeah. <laughs> you had some problems back then. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think I thought that I was going to be a real film critic. Oh, okay. Oh, this is like back in back in the day. Yeah. Got you. Uh, the events play out blisteringly fast, with the characters quickly thrown into a hellish scenario and a few swift dispatches to get the messy action rolling. There's enough deftly handled characterization. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. What film did you watch? <laughs> Not this one. You watched Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, I rewatched that. I wish I had. Uh, okay, there's enough deftly handled characterization for unlikely heroes to soon emerge and villainous cretings deserving of a painful death. Despite the fact this does parody the horror genre, quite effectively, it's careful to never become too predictable. It also never takes itself seriously, featuring monster sex and dismembered monster members. Oh, very good. You were so funny back then. Yeah. Uh, Some may find these gross-out diversions disgusting and unwelcome, while others will embrace the randy monster madness. Yeah, okay, I I know what era Liam we're dealing with. (laughs) This is is horny Liam. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, Feast is not without its flaws. All too often it finds itself subjected to frantic, fast-paced editing, which gives certain events a distinct lack of clarity. There's little need for such confusion, and while director John Gulliger employs this as a means of keeping the full monstrous being relatively well hidden until the blood-soaked climax, it is an unfortunate distraction that could have been avoided. God, that sentence runs on, doesn't it? Uh, The lighting also leaves much to be desired, with its often difficult... No, hang on. The lighting also leaves much to, de- to be desired and it's often difficult to make out exactly what is happening on screen due to an all-encompassing... In- how do you say that word? All-encompassing? 
Encompassing. Encompassing, that's it. The thing is, right, when I write down words, yeah, I know what I mean, but I because they're words that I've I've seen written but I never say out loud, I'm then like, yes. how do I pronounce it? Is uh I used to have that with Chimera. Yeah. I used to pronounce that Chimera because I'd only ever read it. I still struggle with key, like uh like gun wolf keys. Oh yeah, because it's quay. Yeah. Yeah. And like quiche. That's another one that does quiche. my nut in. Quiche. It's a quiche. Anyway, okay, so the light in all is much to be desired, uh, and it's often difficult to make out exactly what's happening on screen due to an all encompassing darkness. The acting throughout is distinctly average, but believable mm. enough. Oh. Mm. And the story does contain a few pleasant surprises. The monsters themselves are well designed and suitably grotesque looking, and That's when they're fair. not busy humping or raping, they prove to be quite formidable foes. Slight point there, I think even when they're raping, they're still quite formidable. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they were weak when they were <laughs> doing horrible sex acts. No. Uh, a sense of fun pervades the screen, and without mm. this, Feast would be a tired gore fest in the same vein as Hatchet. Thankfully, due to a brisk pace and good running time, this monster movie never outstays its welcome. An open ending and unanswered questions pave the way for a sequel, which has potential to build on this solid start. <laughs> While not quite a fearsome feast, this tasty snack should keep horror films... Pleasantly satiated. Oh dear, Liam. So times have changed. Yep, definitely. Tastes have changed. <laughs> yes, clearly. Fuck me. Jeez. Yeah, that 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 was. So I think if you if you think that's what I thought of it ten years ago. So that's what I was expecting still. And I yeah. think if I'd have got a movie that matched that review, I wouldn't have been so disappointed. But this movie does not match that review. No. Yeah, you were clearly very very drunk. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's maybe, a beautiful, beautiful thing, then. Maybe I should have watched it again, drunk. Maybe we'll leave it another ten years, get you really drunk, re-watch it, and sounds, see which review you agree with. That sounds like a bad idea. Um, out of five? Oh, one. I, I, I'm, I'm debating whether to push it up to 1.5, but I'm really struggling to justify why I would do that. Yeah. So I, I think I have to agree with the one. Yeah, because I don't like giving things one. No. But, I honestly don't think this film has earned anything higher. Yeah, like the monsters look cool. And, yeah, but, and, and I, I liked a couple of characters, and there was a couple of bits that were surprising. Is that enough for a one point? I yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to do it. One point five. I done don't know it. if it is though. No, I've done it. One point five out of five. All right, fine. I mean, it's still not great. There you go, listeners. Liam loved this film. That, like, would Liam recommend this film? No. Would you recommend it to someone who was thirteen and <laughs> trying to impress their friends? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, if you want to show your friends what a total twat you are, Feast is yeah. a great movie for if that. You're, if you're one of those twatty kids that thinks that all a good film needs is gore and sex jokes, watch Feast. Am I correct in thinking that this doesn't even have boobs in it? Uh, no, I don't think there I don't think there was any nudity, no. No. Well, there was a monster cock, but... Yeah, but I don't think that counts. Well, I'm going to count it. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, like... and it, This seems like the sort of movie that would have, like, boobs... Yeah, this is sort of, yeah, this is kind of like a weird holdover from that sort of time period where they were doing, like, horror, nudity, comedy, whatever films. Yeah. And this has sort of kept two of those facets and and just failed to do them. Yeah, I think it might have got a two if it had some boobs in it. Well, that's a bad reason to give it half a star, but... Yeah, uh, I kind of... I'm sorry for recommending Feast. Like, especially, I mean, none of our listeners play along with us, but if any of our listeners had have gone out to watch it... Oh, God, yeah. If anyone did watch this, we Sorry. need to save Amanda. I mean, Amanda wouldn't a horror, so she, it's all good. That's true. So she, she might have watched that like short that we were talking about. Yeah. That sounds delightful. I wish it we'd watch that I instead. I wish we'd watch that. Um, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Honestly, no one go watch this. No. And uh, it's also good like evidence that, like you know, while Liam is pretty great, he's not infallible. I'm glad that you've accepted that. You know, we've all allowed a mistake. You're making me watch The Feast too. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, what are we doing next time, Liam? We are doing... God, a... whatever it is, we should have picked something... We could have picked anything here. Whatever it is is going to get raving reviews because it's not Feast. Yeah, that's that's true. But what we're doing is uh, a, a, a TV show that's on Netflix that was made by Channel 4. Yep. It's called The End of the Fucking World, but the fuck is like starred out it's f star 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 i n g yeah so how do i say that fucking fucking i have umbrage to to raise do you yeah with with me yeah oh what have i done you censored me (laughs) 
<laughs> I thought it was funnier. I listened back. <laughs> and within like the first minute, I was censored. <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, we're doing End of the Fucking World. It's eight episodes, so like 20 minutes oh, each. Um, it's going to be better than Feast, isn't it? Hopefully. It's got to be. It's got to be. Oh, God. I think it's like a 92% match to me on Netflix, so... Out of all of the things we've done, I'm thinking Feast maybe has been my least favourite so far. Maybe. Yeah, this I I think I agree with you. I think this might be the lowest thing we've done on the show. Blue is the warmest colour was pretty pretty difficult. But at least that one was like, it was we so didn't long. like it. It was but, so long. But we could also see that there was like, I think, you know, we were like, I can see why people would like this. Yeah. But we don't. This film, I can't see normal people liking. No, I'm trying to think like... Has there been anything else? I- I'm sure there's been something else that was real bad. I mean, if my if my anime suggestions aren't topping that list, I'm happy. Mm, yeah, possibly. Uh, when I did had to do that bloody uh, Attack on Titan. Oh, that was you finished struggle. it yet? Yeah. No. Remember when you promised me you'd finish it? Yeah, I remember when you said you'd finish American Psycho? I am. Well, I'm, I- I've done like 12 Go on, episodes. try and say the lie. You watched one episode. I've done 12 episodes of Attack on Titan in total so far. Whatever. Which is a lot. Uh, Liam, yeah, our wonderful fans, they want to contact us and say, hey, um, I watch The Feast because I always play along at home and I just, I need to shout at you. Yeah. How can they do that? You can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd. Very good. Facebook us, facebook.com slash Nerd on Nerd pod. Yep. They could email us, Nerd on Nerd pod at gmail.com. They could leave a comment on an old YouTube video for some reason. YouTube search nerd on nerd. Please can someone go and up. comment on one of the YouTube videos and say I fucking hate feast. Uh if you just type nerd on nerd, we don't come up. No. Don't uh, be silly. If you type it as, as three words, if you type it as one word, we do come up. Oh do we? We do. Oh cool. So type nerd on nerd or one word, guess what? We're there waiting wow. for you. We're waiting for you. And you can go and listen to episodes that we recorded like two years ago. So it's like a fun... No, I, I've actually been quite enjoying going back and listening to what, what, what we were up to like two years ago. Yes, but it, that's you. You're weird. We all just heard your review of Feast. That was ten years. <laughs> all right, fine. Um, yeah, so... Bye. Just uh, well, super quickly. Just real quick before we go. I don't want there to do is this. Some, there, there, is just, there is just one thing we need to talk about, listeners. Yeah. Liam, the last time I spoke to you, the DVD tally was 1,098. Yeah. You had a lot of reviews this week. I've got a confession to make. Go on. Uh, you were like, um, when we were trying to decide what to do this week, you were like, can we do something on Netflix? And in, in the back of my head, I was like, I know I've definitely seen Feast on Netflix, but also it's one of my DVDs and that's going to help me get my, my list down by one. I fucking knew it. Not that it was in your DVD pile, but I knew you hadn't fucking checked on Netflix, because it is not on Netflix. <laughs> it's not, but it was. Because I did yeah, check, we'll and it, sure. it did... It, I don't know when it got taken off, but it did. Yeah, um, convenient. Yeah, yeah but, so you've definitely knocked one off. Yeah, so what was the number before? 1,098. Cool. It's gone down. What is, has it? Yeah. Because I think you, you were worried, weren't you? There was like a big batch coming in. Uh, No, 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 no. I, I haven't been buying anything. Oh, okay. But I also haven't been watching anything, so it's down to 1,097. Okay, so it's literally just Feast. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Liam. The, the problem is, like, this this is the first movie I've watched at home since coming back from Canada. <laughs> oh, what a bad choice. Yeah, I, I'm just so uninspired to just sit and watch a movie. Like, I don't mind watching Parenthood because I love it and I wish I was a braver man. But, I don't know, I'm really bored with everything. And the thought of just watching a movie doesn't fill me with a lot of joy. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm not sure either. Fair enough. Uh, I'm sure I'll get back into my movies at some point. And, I, I, you know, I'm still going to cinema a lot, but it's not it's not being in Canada, is it? It isn't. Any final thoughts, Liam? Uh, don't <laughs> me. Bye. Bye. You're going to censor that, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs>